Hello everyone, and welcome to my new episode on adding buildings to your maps. A lot of the first part of this video will be similar to the original part 3, as I'll be using PDSMS to place the buildings again, where the new content will center around using DSPRE to insert those buildings into the ROM. Also, as I keep saying in these updated videos, DSPRE is a Generation 4 only tool and has more cleanly drawn a line between Gen 4 and 5 map editing. However, if you are looking into mapping for Gen 5 games, you'll want to come by the Discord from the description to learn about the CRT map and Swiss Army Knife tools, which are making large advancements in the Gen 5 editing. But okay, with all that said, let's get to placing some buildings. The first thing I want to mention is that just like in Mapping 2.5, I'm going to edit the ROM I made at the end of the previous episode instead of continuing to edit the one I was editing last time, which is this ROM here, Platinum 3 Maps Clean, where I stored the contents folder I was editing in 2.5 as a backup for later if needed. However, with how DSPRE works, I also have the option of continuing with the contents folder I was editing in Mapping 2.5. I just like making backups like this in case I run into any issues where I can use those stored folders to step back through my edits to help track when an issue was introduced into my ROM. It's a great method for troubleshooting if you're making a lot of changes in a ROM at once. Alright, so that means I need to make a new contents folder for this ROM, which just means I need to open DSPRE. Open my new ROM. And bam! There is the folder I needed. Easy as that. Okay, now that I have that, I can switch to PDSMS 2.2. And then I'll just go ahead and open where I will select my updated version of the Testington map, which is the town base I inserted into the ROM in episode 2.5, where I will click the Building Editor. Now you'll get this window. This is asking you, where is your contents folder? Where it's just looking for the contents folder made by DSPRE. So I know that mine's on the desktop, so I can go ahead and click this one for my ROM. And I can either click it like this and hit select folder, or I can open it. And then select folder. Either level will work. This editor needed that folder so that it knew what buildings were in the ROM to load into the editor here. But okay, we've got the building editor open. There is a lot in here, but for this introductory video, I'm going to be focusing on the map building editor tab here where I can see a preview of my base of Testington. Now, if you get here and you don't see your preview, that means you haven't exported your map yet. PDSMS uses the export files to load the preview in this window. So if you don't see your preview, close the building editor and then export your files using these buttons like I've shown before. Then you can reopen the building editor and you should see your preview here. Now my map's looking a bit barren, so let's add some buildings. And the process is pretty straightforward, where I can just click the Add Building button here, and I just pick from this list, where there are actual hundreds of buildings <laughs> to pick from. However, you can't just place any building on any map. And I can show you why in DSPRE. So what I need to do is open my map that I'm editing here. So like before, I will go to the matrix editor and I know that my map is right here. And okay, like I've discussed before, this tile set six has told us which tiles this can be drawn with, but they have to be on this list to be able to use them on your map. So in the same way, there is also like a building tile set here which this one uses zero, zero. So I have to make sure that this pick list is set to a tile set that has all the buildings that I want to use. Where already, number zero has the buildings that I want to use for this example. 
But then obviously the question is, what building is in what tile set? And you can see that in PDSMS. So I'll just cancel out of this window and we can go here, to the building tile set editor, where these tile sets change this list over here. So I want tile set zero for my map. And that means that all the buildings that I can use are on this list here. And you can scroll through it pretty quick if you click and hold and then just drag your mouse down through like that. So when I picked what buildings I was gonna put on my map, I made sure to check this list first. All right, so the first building I wanna to add to my map is the Pokemon Center, which we already see is number four right here. So what I have to do is just come back to the tab here and then click the add building and I want number four, which is the Pokemon Center. So I hit okay and well, there it is in the box and it's looking a little shorter than normal. But that's okay, I can just increase the Y by two. There we go, and there it is. Now I want it in the little nook on the left. So I'm going to lower the X, two, three, four, five, six, there we go. So that's over here, this little space that I made. And that's close to where I want it, but not quite there. And now I can show you why I use the base of Jubilife because it has this nice little grid that lines up to where the player can walk. And I want to make sure that the door lines up to a space the player will be on. So if I come to the door, I zoom in real close because it's real hard to see through the uh, red barrier. You can see that it's not quite lined up. There's a square here and there's a square here. So what I figured out was I actually want to put this at negative 6.5. Click off that. And now it's evenly spread on this little tile here. Okay. And if you think it's weird I had to use 0.5, just wait until you see the door. <laughs> Which speaking of, I'll just check the tile set again. And there should be a door I can pick from. Yes, which is this door here that has a name that I'm going to refuse to say in this video. But it is number 70. So, come over here and I can do add building and scroll down to number 70. And add. And oh no, where is it? Oh, oh, what's that? One, two, there it is. This is just because I have this elevated floor with Jubilife. Oh, and you can see now that the red barrier is now on the door because that's what I have selected over here. So you can use that as an indicator what you're looking at. And you can also move the barrier so you can more easily see the tiles by putting it on something else. But okay, so I'm going to put this door at negative 6.5, zero. A Y of 2.039 and a Z of 1.1. And click off to a different field. There we go. And now it's all snugly inside the door. Okay, so with that, let me try to add the rest of my buildings here real quick. Where these will all be buildings that I know are on the tile set over here. So my next one will be building number five, Pokemart. I can zoom out, which by the way, I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom this way. I wanna make sure I mention that. Okay, and yet again, two on the Y, there we go. And this one will be an even positive six. There we are. and a Z of 0 0.8. That seemed to be the best number to line up the door here. Because its door, it's a little different than the Pokemon Center door, it doesn't stick out as far. And speaking of the door, it actually uses the same door as the Pokemon Center. So I come down to number 70 for the door that shan't be named. Slap two on there, there we are. Or again, it will actually be 2.039. Go 
great. Well, this one will actually be an X of 5.5 and a Z of 1.25. Right click onto a different field. Okay, that one's all snugly in there. Good, good. All right, next I'm gonna add a gym, which is right here, number eight. Okay, so that's up by two. So this one is 5.5 and negative eight, way back there. There we go. And then I will add a gym door, which is way down here at 298. There we are, gym door zero, zero. Okay, so two on that one, there you are. Nice set of double doors. That one is also 5.5, but this one goes to negative seven, a little more forward. There we are, and again, nice and snuggly. And lined up at the top of this tile. All right. And then lastly, I'm going to place the player's house which is building way far down, 236. There it is. With a one, two. Okay, and this one is negative 5.5. Two and negative 8.3. There we are. And, okay, strangely, this model shown here has a door, but we still have to add a door. <laughs> I don't know why. And even stranger, there's actually a duplicate building of this. Uh, number 23? Yeah. So <laughs> this is the same building, but I checked the original Platinum and the player's house specifically is building 236 and your rival's house is 23. I cannot tell you if there's a difference between them, but I'm just keeping it consistent to be safe. But anyway, the door I need is number 67. There we go. We ascend it from the floor. <laughs> it's a very active door. Okay, and this one I would say was the pickiest. To get this to work for me, I had to do negative 5.889, but then just negative 7. Okay, and I promise you the door is definitely very actively uh, <laughs> opening and shutting. You're just seeing the door stick out the very moment that it closes, so it looks like there's just a jamming party happening in there. But this should be good to go. So, you may be wondering where I got all these numbers I just put in here. <laughs> Admittedly, they are my own approximations that I came up with to match the grid here for Jubilife, back when I made my original mapping episode three. However, now that we have a more visual tool like DSPRE, you can now more easily check the default maps in the game to get a reference of how buildings are usually placed. For example, which, uh, oh, this happens from time to time. If you just scroll up and down, it comes back to the right map. Don't worry, it's not actually broken. All right, so if I go to the header and I look up Sand Gem, I'll get the town number two, where I can do open matrix, and the correct cell will get highlighted, and I just want to go to the map and click the correct cell here. Okay, so now we can see the settings that are in here that were originally used. Okay, so the PC here is this one. And its door is this one here. 
and you can see its door placement is even crazier than mine. 5.93750. Oh, where well you'll see here that GSPRE displays them with one more decimal point. Yeah, then what uh, PDSMS uses? So there's going to be some rounding between these tools, but it's okay. The, it's, it's so small, you won't notice. Oh, yes, as well, these numbers seem to vary a bit if they're going to be positive or negative. So if I come back here and I look up Celeste Town, which is Town 5, I can do the same open matrix. And that is this cell. So I click on that on the map tab. Okay. And the Pokemon Center for this town and its door will have a positive Z coordinate. And now you see that it ends in 06250. So mostly you just want to make sure that the map you're checking is going to use a similar coordinate to what you want to use, whether it's positive or negative. And I think I think the reason why it's like that is because if you add 0 0.93750 to 0 0.06250, that equals one. But that's my best math. But anyway, long story short, you can use these here to get your own numbers so you know what to put into PDSMS. All right, so we come back here and they're all laid out. So I am good to save down here Click OK in this window. And there's just one more step we want to do in this tool here. And that is to make sure that the player cannot walk through the buildings like a ghost. So we're going to be using the collision editor for that one. We go to the collision tab. It's the same logic where I can walk on zero tiles, but not 80 tiles. So what I want to do is select the red 80 tile here. I want to add my first box here. For the player's house. And then I want a box here. For the Pokemon Center. And one here. For the Pokemart. And one here. For the gym. And while we're here, there are also some special warp tiles that I want to place in preparation for mapping episode four. So I'll switch to the type tab here, where the tiles offered over here are going to change. And I need these purple tiles here for warps. Now different types of warps use different tiles. So for doors, I want to use number 69. I have four doors. So I want to put one here, 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 and here. And I also have these little caves down here, and they need a different kind of tile. The left cave needs a 63 and a 6D. Not a 60, a 6D. There we are, where the right one needs a 6C just off it, and a 62, like so. Where, okay, I'm going to go over why I selected these specific tiles in the next episode, but I wanted to place them in this one just to show that the reason I worked so hard to put the doors in specific spots was to line up with these purple tiles because they had to be close enough to trigger the animation of the door opening and closing when you activate the warp. So just keep that part in mind for now. And like I said, the doors aren't extremely picky, thankfully. And okay, I also have not explained how I knew to put the red boxes where they were here. But actually, that will be easier to explain once I import my files into DSPRE. So let me do that quick. Where I need to save my changes, but there's not a save button on this window, because as it says here, these changes are saved when I click the main save button over here. So that means I can close this window and just click the button. 
And okay, I clicked save on the building editor before, and now I've saved my permissions with this button here. So that means that my BLD file and my .per file are both updated and I'm ready to export. Now, nothing I did affected any of the files exported from these three buttons. So I just need to export the bin button here, where I just click OK, and now it's updated. OK, so that's all ready to go, so I can get this out of the way. Go back to DSPRE, which kept the map this time. And I need to get back to Testington, which is right here. OK, so all I got to do is replace map bin or I'll go into my map example folder, updated folder, into Testington. And this is the file I just updated. So I double click. Okay. And I replaced this tab and this tab at the same time. So here are my changes here as well. And what's really cool is that the collision uh, move permissions tab show the buildings here. So that's how I knew where to put my red boxes. Where the player looks funny if they walk behind the Pokemon Center. And also they are able to walk under this overhang and this overhang just fine. So once again, the SPRE made that really easy. And also if I go to the type tab on this one, you can see that my tiles line up with the doors of each building, which is so nice. And also the SPRE is able to draw on both of these tabs as well. Like if I change this to 80, I can just add a line right there. And then I can save the map, which is convenient. But things get tricky if you start making changes in two different tools. Like if I change these boxes, but then I forgot and then imported my bin file again. Then I blow away my changes. <laughs> but what you can do is draw on either of these tabs, save the map, and I can export these permissions. So I'll put this on my desktop. I'll just call this temp permissions. Okay, and if I come back to PDSMS, you can open the collision editor and then import a permission file like the one I just put on a desktop. If I go to the right side, there we go. Now this is on here, where I can commit these with the save button here if I want it. So thanks to these import and export buttons, these two tools can communicate very well, and that's very convenient. But I don't want to keep that. So let's erase my line here and close this down. And now you may have already noticed that DSPRE has a building editor as well. So once your buildings are edited, they're not quite where you wanted them to be. You can use these to change that as well. But then you have the same concern that if you change them in DSPRE, you have to tell PDSMS about your changes as well and update your bin file or you're on the risk of blowing them away, which thankfully this tab has an import and export button as well. And the same for PDSMS. Oh, but one tip that Ad Asher wanted me to give you about this one's building editor is that you can't actually click around and place buildings in this view. To do so, you have to go to 2D and then enable this button here. You can then move buildings by clicking on the preview. Like so. And whichever one you have highlighted, you can move around. <laughs> Though it can be hard to see the doors from this angle. And there you go. Oh, and perfect. Now I can show you that uh, you don't have to use the bin file to replace these tabs if you don't want to. Like I can import and I have my separate building file here. This was the actual file that was updated when I saved the building editor in PDSMS and then was added into the bin when I exported it. But if I want to just affect this tab specifically, 
I can just insert this in individual file as well. It's also in that same folder. And we're back to how we were. That's the exact same for the permissions. It has its per file in the same folder. But okay, Tessington is all updated. So just in case I can save the map and then save a new ROM, which I'll put in the desktop and I will call this one Platinum 3 Maps Town and save. And that should show up right here. And I can open it. In this movie. So town. Ah, on my map. At night. So if I walk up north here, I should uh, hopefully, when I get here, see some buildings. At night. <laughs> so here we go. Now, these buildings are just shells, but I can see that I cannot walk through them. And if these 80s were not properly placed, I could. Like I was haunting the town like Danny Phantom. But right now, the doors do not do anything. They need the warps to be able to actually function. Same thing with the caves down here. But that is exactly what the next episode is for. So I'll wrap up here. As always, all of these map files that I'm using for these examples and the tools that I'm using as well are in the tool zip folder you can get from the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or come on by the Discord from the description as well. I will see you guys in episode four. Good night, everybody!